decades past, um, energy was um, a supported um, uh, sector, largely by the donor funds, um, and this is significantly reducing. Um, the energy sector in Africa still has a huge gap. We're talking about 600 million um, of Africans without access to energy, without electricity. We're talking about um, millions who cannot switch a light in their houses. Now, the donor funds is going down and down. And there has been a discussion between the Europeans and the Africans in terms of uh, innovating ways in getting more investment into the energy sector. And this aspect has been to bring in the private sector, and this has been, let's say, the, the strong drive to engage the private sector to enhance more investment into the energy sector. This, to us, might turn around the, the huge gap that we see on the energy sector in Africa. So one of my uh, feelings is, is that without energy, it's one of the biggest stories in Africa, the continent's not going to grow. Surely more emphasis should be put on energy investment than before any other investments considered. What do you think of that? Yeah, that's true. And, and that's why um, within the partnership, um, the engagement has been uh, not only within the, the private sector, but also at the political level. Why at the political level? What uh, uh, the, the, the partnership has been trying to, to bring in the impetus to the, to the policy makers to not only, let's say, bring in the private investment or uh, funds from, uh, from, 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 from the donors to support the work, but also the budget allocation, budgetary allocation to the energy sector. Energy sector is one of those that did not receive you know, major budgetary uh, allocation from the, from the government. But now, in the past 10 years, we've seen that increasing. It's, we're not there yet, so most of the funds are put into the uh, uh, road, transport, um, into the health sector. But now, energy slowly by slowly is increasing. Why that? The climate equation comes in. I mean, Africa is realizing, although uh, the emissions is not that big, but we will, Africa will be affected in the years to come. And that's why looking into the clean energy, looking into the renewable energy as an alternative source is something that governments are actually looking into. What do you think needs to be done to get more people interested in sinking their money into energy in Africa? I think the, the, the whole equation has to be um, uh, looking at energy as, as an enabler to development. Because look at the poverty situation in Africa. It is spreading. I mean, we're talking about millions living under $2 a day. However, energy can enhance people, you know, mostly in the rural areas, to get into productive use of energy. And in this case, um, eradication of poverty comes in, and this is an aspect that once it is brought into picture as energy um, in terms of as an enabler to development, this will thrive in itself. It will ensure that the private sector picks it up because as soon as um, the communities, who are now the consumers, who are the buyers of the energy, realize that I can make money out of having a mini grid system or a, a solar system or electricity, I can be able to shave people and get money out of it. I can be able to have a sewing machine. I can be able to uh, process my tomatoes, my onions. Then they will want to have it and they will be ready to pay for it. And as soon as they are ready to pay for it, the private sector would come in. And in that case, then the energy subject moves on. What about regulation and taxation in countries in Africa? I mean, I've often thought it would be worthwhile for an African nation to say, OK, all energy projects are tax free. And secondly, they're going to make it as easy as it possibly can. Yeah, that's a good question because, and this is, we get a lot from the private sector, in particular from Europe, who want to invest in Africa, mentioning the issue of regulation, mentioning the issue of risks, mentioning the issue of, you know, I mean, you can name them. And what we've been doing is to, to bring the two sides together, the private sector and the policymakers, where the private sector kind of bring in these issues of regulation and be able to say, you know, if you don't, let's say, reduce the taxes on wind um, um, components or the solar uh, uh, components or the solar modules themselves, then the price of these commodities are much higher for people to, 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 to buy. So we're seeing the government reacting towards this, and we've seen some countries that are reducing the taxes. However, I must admit, we're still not there, and this is an aspect that we're pushing for. However, I will be quick to point out here, 
with the support of the European Commission, the African Union Commission is now uh, intensifying this, harmonizing the regulatory framework in the continent. And this is an aspect that we see will trickle into the member states, into the regional economic communities, and in that case we hope that there will be, let's say, a harmonized framework in the, in the, in the energy sector that can attract investment. So lastly, I mean, do you think there's uh, any cause for uh, even Africa to despair sometimes about uh, the situation when it comes to energy? Or what do you think? I mean, where I stand, I would say yes, because of the, kind, the huge gap that still exists. However, looking at the strides that the European and the African uh, policymakers and stakeholders are putting in, I see light at the end of the tunnel. I see this cooperation intensifying. Now that we've met here within the EU, business, EU Africa Business Forum, I see the private sector uh, uh, having gathered in Abidjan. I see the summit um, uh, coming up with a declaration that will forward this in the next three years. I see light at the end of the tunnel.